You now know how to use logging as a debugging tool, and it can certainly be an effective way of understanding what is happening in your app. However, it can also be very tedious, not to mention time consuming, to have to write a log message, rerun your app, check the logs, attempt to figure out what might be going wrong. This is where breakpoints come into play. Breakpoints are another handy tool provided by Android Studio. They allow you to pause the execution of your app at a given line of code that you specify so that you can inspect the state of the application and its data at that point. If you've not used breakpoints before, this might sound a bit confusing, but honestly, they are very easy to use and really quite useful. Why don't we try it out so you can see for yourself. With your project open in onsave instance state in mainactivity.kt, find the log line at the bottom of the function. Then click on the gutter to the left of the line. This is the space to the left of the code that contains the line numbers and other information about the code. The red dot indicates a breakpoint and that you've just set a breakpoint for that particular line of code. When the program is in debug mode, the code execution will freeze at that line of code. To run code in debug mode, you click the button in the toolbar, the one with the bug with the play button on it. By default, you run your code in run mode. Building and running in debug mode might take longer and be a little bit finicky. If you run into issues, you may have to restart the emulator. Once the app is loaded, rotate the screen to have Android Studio stop on the breakpoint you set. Notice that code execution has stopped before executing the line highlighted in the IDE. We also have access to some new buttons. The play button restarts execution. The pause button will pause your app. The app is already paused, which is why it's grayed out. The stop button stops the app from running. The view breakpoints button shows your current breakpoints in the app. This is useful when you have lots of breakpoints to manage. The mute breakpoints will temporarily ignore other breakpoints. We also have other buttons to manage our code flow at the top of the panel. The first button shows the execution point. This will jump the cursor to the spot where you are debugging. The step over method moves to the next line of code. If the line of code is a method call, it will step over it. The method will still run, but you'll effectively skip it. The step into button is when you want to look inside a method. The force step forces the debugger to step into a method. Use this when you're having problems stepping into a method. Stepping out makes you leave the current method. You can inspect the app state at this point via the debug panel and the variables view in the debug panel. The this variable refers to the current activity. You can expand the this item to see its properties and values. You will recognize some of the properties under this are the ones they added to main activity for the custom implementation of app compat activity. The rest come from the implementation of at compat activity and its superclasses. Also notice the inline code added by Android Studio, the gray text, to indicate the values of various properties at this point or the memory locations of different variables. This can be helpful in debugging complex bugs involving multiple properties. Finally, expand the mmap property inside the outstate bundle. This is the dictionary holding the data saved via onState instance, and in that you should see the values for the score and time remaining here. Compare the values to what you have in the corresponding variables in this. Now stop the app and run it again in debug mode, but this time, tap the Hit Me button a few times. Let the countdown timer run down a bit, then rotate the device. Compare the values in mmap again against the values in this. They are now not the default values, but the actual values from this, thus indicating that the values you saved via on save instant state are indeed correctly saved. You have verified that on save instant state does save the values for the current game state correctly by using debugging. All that remains now is to restore these saved values when a configuration changes, such as a device rotation. We'll tackle that in the next video.